Do you guys get nervous before you? Every uh, time. Really? <laughs> yeah. I've never gotten. Do you get nervous? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so nervous right now all of a sudden. And honestly, we're all going to die and nothing matters, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 180, 380. What is it? 180. 180 of dropouts. This week, we got a guy whose uh, vocal mm -hmm. cords are better than mine, and it makes me want to fight him, but that's all right. <laughs> we'll act like we like him while he's here. Alec Benjamin, Hello. clap if we've got- do I, do I look at the camera, or do I look at you? That's or? your camera straight ahead. You can oh, look directly right into yeah, it. Yeah, you, you can want. eyeball that thing, or you can look at me. Hello. Um, I wouldn't look at Jared, because most people, they get a little sad. <laughs> um, I think you look great. Thank you. And you yeah. have to say- that because you're here uh yeah well, no, 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 no. i don't have to say it i said it because i that's how i genuinely felt when i walked in today and i saw you i thought he looks he looks great oh thank you yeah. i appreciate and I, that and i thought i hope i have an opportunity to tell him that and then i hope i have an opportunity to be tested and then to defend myself <laughs> and really show you how how genuine uh my feelings are i feel it i yeah. feel the genuine I, well everyone i i don't mean I mean, to make you more nervous, but everyone just immediately started hating you because it's it's a common theme that okay. everyone in Jared's life that comes up to like they absolutely loathe him. So I just want to say you're not on you're not on a good side. No, no, no. Right, Zach well, is just projecting because that's how he feels. How about we um, hit some intro music so we can collect our thoughts, huh? All right. This is this is the time we're gonna take a break for a second. Okay. Guess what you're missing out on? Being a patron member. That means you get a drunk episode every month or there's things we can't put on the internet. It is literally the most disgusting, vile, and fun podcast you've ever seen. Here's a little clip of what you're missing out on. I'm Jewish. <laughs> I'm also part Jewish. Shut up. <laughs> Small is the biggest erect. What was the biggest? Eight, Eight inches. inches. Uh, uh. Uh, I've taken like 14. <laughs> <laughs> you, think you think that's, that's eight, eight inches? inches? Wait, no. You're going to be pretty you disappointed if I ever get pants at a local pool. <laughs> that's, that's eight that's inches? That's eight inches. Imagine taking that. You're feeling that shit in your guts. <laughs> this is our favorite friend that's been hogtied and kidnapped. Oh, we're getting right into it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, Zach, how about a little lube first before you just fucking ram that down our throat? What's up, man? When are you going to start your OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a psychopath. You're crying wearing <laughs> medieval times. You have one shoe off. <laughs> and you're drinking. So become a Patreon member now because you also get these episodes early. You get a live Q&A each month. Um, you get prizes each month, a uh, month with like an Xbox, a Nintendo Switch, uh, AirPods, gift cards, merch. We give away a ton of stuff. Um, also, it's a great opportunity to be part of the community. So just so you know, if you have a little bit of FOMO for not being a Patreon, it's well earned because you're missing out on the best community on the internet in the description and the first comment on this podcast is where you can find our Patreon. Go become a member now or else you are missing out on the best entertainment of your life. All right, thank you guys. Love you. Kiss me if you see me in public. Where did you get that intro music from? Uh, Jared Bailey made I, it. I made oh, you that. make music? I do, yeah. I feel like I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this well is, no one else does. This okay. is super exciting because finally after 180 episodes, we finally have a musician on. Okay. And that's like really my area of interest and expertise. Have you, know? you not have you not had a musician on yet? Am I the first one? You're the first one. Let's go. Well, thank goodness I can sit back and just I mean we've had some influencers that say they make music. Okay. And then but every time you put it in your ears you want to then decapitate yourself. I don't know if <laughs> I'm, I must have not heard those songs. Uh, <laughs> no one else. I've never had that experience no listening to music. Did either. Um, <laughs> when did you know that you had the song Spirit of a Canary? Was it a young um, age? That's a good question. It's not. It's very. It's very rudimentary. <laughs> no, it's, it's very baseline. It, it is, but I think. Well, it's. But it's a. But there's a reason why. Um, I think it's a good. It's a hard question to answer because as I like look at my life, um, I feel like I never like had like a realization where I was like, I'm gonna be a musician. Or even when you're like, oh, we have a musician on the podcast. I'm like, who? <laughs> you're like, <laughs> who? 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 Can't wait to meet him. <laughs> but I suppose it's what I've become, and it was a slow process over time. There were certain things that made me want to do what I do. Also, is my mouth dry? Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, I think you're good. I do this every time. Like, I can hear. I, what, okay, whenever that happens to me, I usually, I do make out with Jared. So at any okay. point, you go over there. Go over here. He's, <laughs> he's right. got a good tongue on him. Um, I, 
when did I realize it? I realized, well, I, I remember I was at a summer camp, um, and uh, before that, I only listened to heavy metal music, and then at summer camp, really? he, yeah. I would never have gotten that vibe from you. That's all I got. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, I used yeah, to yeah. wear, like, super tight pants, and I had, not that I'd be opposed to, like, wearing them now, I just don't wear them anymore, yeah. um, but I, I had, like, I had, like, bleach tips, like, long, like, I did the, you know, <laughs> I was angry. Did you have a sidekick? Uh, like a per like a person. No, like the me. phone. You remember the sidekick? No, I had like a little like I had like a friend. Oh, he was a friend. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, what was his name? Uh, I don't know. The first thing that comes into my head is Jerry. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Like, I see you didn't bring him up with you though. Like once you hit success, you kind of left Jerry. I left to him the behind. Jerry's. Yeah, that I makes said, sense. I said I, once I figured. Well, that that brings me to what I was going to talk about. When I realized that this was my path, I said peace. So, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, no, but I was at summer camp and um, everyone was listening to the uh, song I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. And I was like, mm, that's interesting. I, I think, I think I like this music. <laughs> so, you didn't know anything else existed. There's the whole time. Wait, I yeah. thought music meant you, when you're mad, you, you listen to, to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I, um, there was a guy in my cabin named Justin and he, uh, all the girls liked him. You oh, know, he had a six Justin. pack, which was pretty. At what age? He was uh, 12. <laughs> All right. just, <laughs> just rocking yeah. the washboard abs. He did roller hockey, I remember, and that's where yeah, that's where he got it. So shouts out to roller hockey, whatever <laughs> league he was in in Irvine, California. Well, you guys didn't have um, a washing machine, I assume, at, at the camp, so you guys just washed it on his abs. Yeah, in the yes, creek. That's what we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. why everyone liked um, him because he was useful. Yeah. Well, so that he would be playing, and he played Wonderwall, and I saw like, whoa, people <laughs> are like, people are listening to him, like that's crazy. So I started singing, and then. I thought were, you started doing sit-ups. No. I did. I did that yeah. too, but I realized it'd be way easier to just become a professional musician. <laughs> yeah. They get six packs. Yeah, no thanks. So this is your backup plan. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. If I could have been, if I could have done that, I would have done that. But then I started singing. Um, I remember we were outside the dining hall area and um, people just, they listened to me in a way that they had not paid attention before. And I was like, well, that's, that's kind of a powerful thing. Um, Summer camp will do that because people can't go anywhere. There's no parents to pick them up. They're like, right. I guess we'll listen to this kid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, test it, out his dreams. It gave me the it gave me the opportunity to do it, and I did the campfire there. And and then the next summer when I came back, I had learned how to play guitar. And uh, I think that was like uh, one of the things that made me want to do it. But then also I kind of realized that you know I think the thing inside of me that I always felt like wasn't that I wanted was for people to just listen to what I had to say, and I felt like I couldn't get them to listen. And I was like, well, if I can sing the things that I want to say, then maybe that will be a more powerful way to communicate my message. So over time, I learned how to write songs. Um, now, what did you want to say when you were 12 and 13? I wish I had the abs. <laughs> I was like, like Justin. Just like I was, Justin. Well, I was, I was like frustrated. I, I was mm. always like interested in uh, like philosophy and stuff and like, geopolitics. I started learning how to speak Chinese. Okay. Very yeah. old soul. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I started learning how to speak Chinese when I was in middle school. Um, and so just Where like, have you been my whole life when I've just- Do you speak I, Chinese? No, no, but yeah. I, I get a lot of Panda Express. Okay. So I, I would I'm not sure that's the same thing. It's exactly the same. And I would love to order, I will say a lot of the workers are Hispanic out here. Yeah, I don't think that. <laughs> I need to learn Spanish. Go ahead. I cut you off in such um, a- but I was just wanting to, like, I don't know. I had a lot of things to say. Maybe some of the things that I had to say were not great. But I think the way that I figure out whether or not my ideas have, like, any sort of merit is I express them. And then I sort of allow them to be tested. Similar to what happened at the beginning when I said, you look great. <laughs> and then I, was, I had to defend myself. It's very Socratic. You, know? you, <laughs> you know? should have <laughs> sang it, though. Yeah, you should have defended yourself by singing it. But you knew you had a decent voice? Uh, I didn't. Um, but... Uh, you know, I also don't know if like, no, it's not about like if you have a good or a bad voice, it's about understanding the, um, the quality of your voice and then understanding the context in which your voice should reside. So like I knew the voice that I had and I understood the kind of music that would best be paired with the sound of my voice, with the tone of my voice. So you knew that your voice maybe wasn't meant for like the heavy metal that yeah, you I had been I listening to. Yeah, I couldn't scream. <laughs> I also like, I also, my guitar playing is not, you know, I'm not, uh, I can't play, like I can't shred, you know. You're telling not, me you can't shred. I cannot, no, I, I, I certainly can't. Yeah, I wish I could, you know. <laughs> so I picked a, a genre of music where I felt like, you know, I could, I could sort of 
keep up with the guitar playing, which even then, then I found John Mayer and I was like, oh, I can't, like, I can't do that, you know? <laughs> um, but so your music has just been you finding out you can't do things. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I, think, yeah. I, think that, I think that like a lot of times, sometimes people say like, oh, like you're negative or whatever. And I think a lot of times I do, I get depressed and I, I am negative about things, but I think in order to know what it is that you like, um, that you have to know what it is that you don't like. Yeah. And so I'm very aware of the things that I like, and I'm also very aware of the things that um, repulse me. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's what I think. At me next in, time. <laughs> in order for your music to have, like, a uh, like a consistent um, ethos, you know, and, like, for your in order to have, like, a message that feels consistent across time, you have to be, you have to be, uh, you have to be picky, you know, about what, what you do and what you don't do. So depression is a common theme in your music. I would I, say so, yeah. I made, well, I made Alyssa, she's our wonderful assistant. Are I you made depressed? Her, you made her depressed? No, no, I made her, I made her get it rid of- It certainly doesn't help. <laughs> all the ropes and guns before you came over. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Just because I didn't I know. I, I didn't want to use any of those things, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't want you to start here. I can't have your blood on my hands. Mm -mm, no. Uh -uh. Okay, so, so you're at the camp, you're singing fa la 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 around a fire. Do you go home to your parents and be like, this, this is my blessing. This is my calling. Um, I went home to my parents and I said, mom, Justin had a guitar, I need a guitar. <laughs> need one now, take me to guitar center. And so my parents bought me a guitar. Um, and then they told me you need to, I, I'm very lucky to have parents who are really, really supportive of oh, what it is that I wanted to do. Here going to be flexing the whole podcast. No, I'm not flexing. <laughs> is that, is that me, a brag? Hey, look, yeah, flexing that's a my brag parents. For bragging. Him. I, have, I, got, I have great parents. Let me guess, your dad was in your life the whole time? He, he was. Yeah, he was. there it is. He was. You know, Something we can't relate to. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry very to, true. I don't mean to rub it rub it in, but that's one of the things that I, I don't, I feel very, um, I feel very happy to brag about, you know, and so I can't, uh, wouldn't have been able to do it without them, but uh, I I decided to, they wanted me to get a teacher, and I said, uh-uh, <laughs> I hated school, and I wanted to sort of, you know, pick my own path of how I was going to learn how to play, so I just spent all my time on YouTube. Um, and then like two or three months, I kind of figured out, you know, how to do the basic chords and how to accompany myself. And then I was kind of- Why did you have such a disdain for school? Was it the social element or the education element? Um, I think it was both. Um, <laughs> I think that the social element of the school is also in part impacted by the way that the education is structured. So um, like, I don't know, I feel like the way that we were interacting with our peers was like, you know, it was- I guess I didn't like that, but I think a lot of that had to do with the environment that we were in. You know, I don't think it was an environment that was really conducive to like having healthy social interactions with your peers. Um, but also, um, I just didn't like the structure. I'm an auditory person, not a visual person. So I like to listen to things. I didn't learn that way. I have ADD, you know, so I can't like focus in the way that they wanted me to focus. I hated school. It was like the first. That's when I realized, that's also one of the reasons why I realized like, okay, maybe I don't have all the skills that I need to be a musician, but like, uh, I got to make this work because it was the only career path that I could really see where I did not have to go to college and finish. I, I dro I'm a dropout. so You dropped out of college? Hell yeah. Whoa, whoa. I, I wear that. That's like, that's like me being like, you know, I, I'm a, people who are like, I went to Harvard. I'd be like, I didn't go to Harvard. You know, that's, that's my, that's my <laughs> where, where did you go? Uh, I went to USC. I've heard of it. Yeah, I went to, for one year, uh, my parents told me that um, you only you only asked me about how I got into music. I'm like, let me tell you my life story. No, <laughs> no, that's perfect. Listen, the more you talk, the less I have to, okay. and I can just just chill. Okay. Well, I, I yeah, I went to USC for a year. My parents were supportive of my music, but they told me that if I wanted to do this um, and have help from them, uh, that I either you know. Well, it just was no compromise. Like I had to go to school, so I went to I wanted to move to LA, so I went to USC, and then the second I got a record deal, I dropped out of. School. Okay, you skipped. The, the, you, went yeah, from, the, you went from campfire to record deal, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we better. No, we're about to find some common ground in between. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. When did when did the traction start to build up? The first time I ever saw you was mm. YouTube videos. You and going and singing to people in public. Let's go. I just I just filmed a bunch more of those. Hell yeah! Did you really? Yes, I did. Yes, going I did. back to your roots. Have I love to. it. Yeah, I wanted to do it, but during the during the pandemic, obviously you couldn't do that, yeah. so it was not possible. Um, okay, so how did it start? I guess. The way that it started was I was like, okay, I want to learn how to do this and how to sort of make this a viable career path for me. But although my parents were supportive, they were not in the industry, you know, and obviously like, you know, knowing people and nepotism is important, mm -hmm. um, not just for like 
connections, but being connected to people who have the knowledge to like and the wisdom to give you. So I was on Wikipedia just like looking at, you know, Jason Mraz records and John Mayer records and finding all of the people that had participated in the creation of these records creatively. And then I was just finding, you know, their all of their personal information, calling them personally, <laughs> reaching out to their, you know, children on Facebook, you know, like, hey, and and ultimately I got in touch with a guy named Sasha who was based in the UK who had written a lot of the early James Blunt stuff. He did like You're oh, Beautiful cool. and he did um, like some early Adele stuff. He wrote um, that Miley Cyrus song, Wrecking Ball. Um, that was before... He did that after I started working with him, but I had sent him my demos and he was like, actually, you know, these don't suck. You know? <laughs> and so I, I kept bothering him and eventually he flew me to London. And when I was like 15, 16 and started like mentoring me and teaching me how to write songs. Um, and so uh, I did that. And then so do you, would you say you kind of have like a reserved personality when it comes to other things in life where it's like, oh, maybe a little to myself. I, I maybe or, or you've always been a go getter in every asset of your life. Mm, I guess. I, I try to take the path of least resistance, but I've picked a difficult endeavor. So the path that you ultimately have to take a lot of times is uh, has a lot of resistance. You know, if I didn't have to do any of that stuff, I wouldn't have done it. You know, <laughs> how, how, did, how did you? I guess it's so hard to get into the music industry, even if you are talented. It's easier now. Yeah, it's a TikTok. Why after the first no, were you not like, well, I'll just hit somebody else up? Because the alternative was going to college and tr getting a, an advanced degree. And I was yeah. like, hell no. <laughs> so I talked to my parents and um, I said, well, you know, what do I do after I graduate? Like, my mom's like, you go to law school or become a doctor? And I was like, oh, God. no <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> so after the first no, I was like, dude, I don't care. I'm finding someone else then. You know, and there's a lot of people. For some reason, like the no's, I get, I get over it. I don't know. How do you deal with rejection? I've never dealt with Not it. Well. No one's ever said no? <laughs> no, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But I'm sure it sucks for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, it's not great. No, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of no's come your way. So it's, you're just looking for the one yes, yeah. you know, and you got no in your pocket anyway. So if you don't ask, it's like, that's definitely going to be a no. Right. Um, so yeah, I just keep on keeping on. Uh, what do you do to make yourself feel good? You got like a special, special snack, special something. Oh. Get you going. I thought that question was going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it can. Oh, it will. What, what, what do I do? Uh, what do I do? Um, I, I do. Yeah. I get snacks. I eat a lot. Of, What's a lot your favorite of snacks? Uh, depends on the day, but I mean, I eat like a lot of like candy, you know, I like those sour straws, not the straws. I actually like the, like the one on a roll, you know, like the strips, sour oh, strips. Oh, like the, yeah. the foot long or whatever thing. Yeah. 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 You know, it could, could, could be foot long. I don't could know. Could be a yard. <laughs> could be six inches. Yeah. <laughs> could be whatever, you know. I do those little, uh, those little fun shots, like the magic mind shots. Well, it, I've never. What is that? It's just like a magic. Is that mushrooms? No, it's it's just. Well, like, technically, it do, it's not. It doesn't have the trippy mushrooms in it, but it's got some like adjacent cousins of them. Okay. In it. It's just like this little shot, and it's. I don't drink coffee or do anything like that, but I feel like to get through my day, I have to pop it in to kind of like it make you reset feel the mind. It makes me feel so much better. Do you have some? Because it's all healthy stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have one. I've always wanted to try like the psychedelic mushrooms, but I smoked weed for the first time during the pandemic and I got so high <laughs> that actually I had an edible. I got so high uh, that I, I slept in bed with my parents. That's not high. That's a good <laughs> night. That's I was so scared. I was so scared. I thought I was dying. Um, and my dad is a doctor, so I thought, well, if anything happens to me, I need to be right next to him. What know? kind of doctor? A uh, family practitioner. He was trained in, in peds, pediatrician. Hell yeah. Yeah. I've seen how, how did your fa or your parents feel about you smoking weed? Because like my parents would disown me. Um, how did they feel about it? I think that did they know you were high when you climbed in or yeah, just they like, knew this I was is him. Do it. Well, it was during the pandemic. My sister had moved back into the house with my brother-in-law. Um, and which was awesome, uh, until, you know, we hit the boiling point like three months in and just every shit hit the fan. Um, and then we all obviously <laughs> made up. But, Older you know, sister you or younger? Older. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's 32, I think. I don't know. 30 something. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Hell yeah, brother. Um, I, uh, thank you. So give it a good shake. Kind of chase this thing. But there aren't, it's not psychedelic mushrooms. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. This is just it's like it, an energy boost. It, it was kind of interesting. It's I'm like an energy it. boost and it helps you stay focused. Okay. You know, it's I essentially just matcha green tea thank and you for this. agave. Thank you for you. And honestly, oh, welcome. for like these green healthy shots, it doesn't taste bad. It's like it good. tastes pretty good. It's kind of apple y. Um, but I said to, I said to them, I said, I'm going to, try an, uh, an edible and my mom said that's a terrible idea and my dad was like do whatever you want you know like it's legal you're 
of age uh, and I did and it was a horrible decision and I did the dumbest thing where which everyone tells you not to do is I was like I tried one and then I was like well this isn't working you know, oh, I gotta shit. I gotta hit like two more of these you know and yeah. then all of a sudden I was like oh my god I'm high I can <laughs> see sounds yeah. do, you, do you know well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> actually it felt like it felt like I was I was like moving back <laughs> in my head like I was farther back it felt a, like a long distance from where I was to where my eyeballs were to where the outside was oh it's and like uh get out have yeah, you ever seen that I haven't but oh shit you got I trust your it. judgment and it's probably <laughs> exactly like that but I I I like I couldn't follow a thought through to completion and I kept having this like sort of small feedback loop where it's like it's like oh uh, okay and then i would get nervous and nervous and i would worry about things and i would go oh i'm just high <laughs> then i would chill out and then it would start again and this is all in between my parents <laughs> <laughs> which is the funniest image i can are they imagine. asleep or are they watching you the whole time um i think they were uh sleeping yeah. and, and you're just having i kicked my dog life. out of the bed i was like sorry zoe oh, you're out of here what kind of dog <laughs> Uh, she is a Maltese poo. We rescued her during the pandemic. Oh, so. Did she deserve to be rescued? Has she been Absolutely. thankful? She is the best. She's dog. been thankful? Oh, she's Good. the best. The absolute best. I I wish I had a dog my whole life. So, But you've learned that getting high isn't for you. It's not for me. So that's why I'm, my, why I'm afraid to try um, mushrooms. Um, because I've, I've heard that, you know, it's in some ways a similar experience. You, well, you um, can start light with like DMT. <laughs> yeah, I would, that's a good idea. Yeah, I might as well. You know? I, I, I've heard people take it and they just live a lifetime and then come back some to ketamine, where they you know? took it. <laughs> yeah. If you want some ketamine, Jared's got some. Oh, yeah. I, don't I heard even, it makes you poop. Does it? I've never heard that before. Okay, maybe I don't, not. I don't even drink, so I, okay. I'm the okay. most boring person when it no, comes to substances. No, that's not boring at all. Substances. I think, no, I think it probably makes you the most interesting I'm person. I'm a big board game guy. Okay, you that's You throw good. a board game at me, I, I'll I'm, roll some I, dice. Are you a Monopoly player? Love Monopoly. Uh, he does love Monopoly. Are you not? I know I love Monopoly. Yeah. I, I say I say you, me, candlelight. We throw some that. dice sometime. Huh? I would love that. Oh yeah, I brother. Love that. You're both invited. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to do it. Anymore. I'd actually prefer to do anything else. Okay. No, no, no. I want to. I want to get back on this timeline. So, we, so we we talked to this person. Had you already started singing in public? Um. No. I so basically. And was that the pop? No. So I I started on I started like writing and singing before I ever was on the internet. Actually, at the same time. My sister was, um, who's amazing and is helping me with a lot of stuff. She was in like the Warped Tour scene. She loved oh, like, yeah, a, yeah. like Mayday Parade and those bands. And she was starting like street teams for those, um, for those artists. And she was like, there's one band called Mayday Parade. And she was like, you know, a fan of theirs. And they were following Warped Tour around in the parking lot, um, which is one of the ways I got the idea to sing in the parking lots in front of concerts and stuff. But she was like, you got to be on Twitter. You got to be doing this stuff. I was like, nah, you know, forget that. I just want to make music. I'm an artist, dude. Like, yeah. you don't understand. Like, I can't, I can't be doing that. Like, that's not, that's not cool. Um, and so I just wrote a lot of music. And then uh, I ultimately, because of the interest, I was like sort of making the rounds in the songwriting community. And I kind of got like some cred. And it was also like the last days where labels would be like, they would sign an artist without having a big social following. Um, but, uh, once they signed you, they kind of didn't really know what to do with you because you had to like, you know, be on vine or whatever. <laughs> so I got a record deal. I had all these songs and then they were like, okay, well, you know, let's look at what the first week sales are going to be. And I was like, first week sales. I was like, bro, I have no fans. Who am I, who, <laughs> They're going to be atrocious. Yeah, who am I selling this to? And I'm an, I'm a 18, 19 year old, like singer songwriter. So I'm not like pop exactly, but I'm also not like at that time it was like, it was like pitchfork, you know, like really cool, like dark, like yeah. London grammar. It's like pitchfork is not going to do an article on me. You know what I mean? So they were like, well, we don't know what to do with this kid. And we're not taking his songs to, to radio. I put out one single and it sold nothing. Obviously, like my mom bought it on iTunes. <laughs> Shout and out I'm to like, her. But it's like, I didn't know why any, everyone was surprised. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, isn't that your job right. to like put me in front of people? Exactly. Wow. Well, I mean. You know, it's changed. The paradigm has shifted. But then I realized, like, oh, I'm I'm fucked. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna get dropped. And so then I started doing all of this stuff and playing in parking lots and doing like you now, which was a big thing. Yeah, for live I I, I used time. to do it too. I remember okay, that. There you go. Yeah, did, yeah, yeah. Did we ever cross paths? On oh you yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We were. I I remember I got on there. I was like, hey, let's be best friends. And then I think 
you you like broke your computer over your knee or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> it was that. something crazy where you just didn't want to see me for the rest of your life. <laughs> it might but be. got your back. Might be. Um, and uh, but by that time when I started doing it, the label had all the rights to my music. So I was like, well, hey, I want to start releasing stuff and and getting the things going. They're like, well, you can't put anything out. So I got shelved, which is like a thing that labels oh, will do shit. when they have you. Um, and so I was like, all right, then ultimately I got dropped. I didn't get the rights to my music back when I got released from my contract. So I had all these songs and I was like, well, maybe the songs suck, but I'm going to start putting them on, on the internet. So I had this song called the water fountain that I wrote, I wrote when I was 18 and I put it out at like 21, just on what year did that come out? Uh, it must've came out like eight years ago, but probably like seven and a half years ago, eight years ago. Like, I don't know, whatever. I can't do the math. But <laughs> I put that on my YouTube channel and um, I just started like going and singing in front of people's concerts and doing all that stuff. Things that people had told me not to do, but I was so desperate that I was like, yeah. I'm going to do it. Because I, I remember going to the One Direction show and being like, there's all these people here. Why outside. did they say not to do it? They said it was weird, <laughs> which it kind of was like it was, you know, it was a little weird, but like it'd be so worse what? if you sucked. Well, it'd be weirder yeah. if I f failed. Yeah. I'm like, that's weird. Like, you know, <laughs> I have to go, like, move back in with my parents. I also still live with my parents, though. People ask me, like, I'm like, say I have two roommates, you know? <laughs> How are they? I'm like, they're amazing, you know? They're that's great. <laughs> Does that help with the love life? When uh, yeah, it's great. It's actually the best thing when you're out on a date and you're like, hey, do you want to come back to my place and meet my parents on the first day? <laughs> and like, you just text that. them, you're like, hey, keep, make sure dinner's good tonight. <laughs> they, they love, they I love got a that. hottie coming home. That's, that's, the, best, that's the best part. Um, that really seals the deal for me every time. Um, but uh, so I started doing that stuff and then some of the songs started to get traction, which was weird because I didn't own the rights to them. So technically they weren't allowed to be online. But I was like, look, if they're not going to put in money behind me to push me, um, they're certainly not going to spend the money to sue me for having put the songs <laughs> out. So um, one of the songs, the Water Fountain song, started going kind of viral on uh, Musical.ly. Oh, all my shit. mouth is getting dry. I can I can hear it? Can I, oh, can <laughs> I have one of these? Feel free to yeah, of they're, they're all they're three all are for, for you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not allowed to have any. I asked. I actually asked your manager. I was like, can I have some of his water? She said, and she uh -uh, said, uh -uh. She said uh -uh. She's like, all for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then the YouTube video started getting views, and. Uh, um, there was a kid who um, I had um, was going to make a music video with for a song I had called I Built a Friend. And he we didn't end up making the video because I didn't have enough money to finance it. And uh, he ended up going on America's Got Talent. And he was like, can I dance to your song? And <laughs> oh, I was shit. like, I was like, yeah, I got to re-record it illegally. <laughs> 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 so like kind of what, one of the things that like Taylor Swift was doing, she had to wait a yeah. minute to re-record her records. Labels have these things in their contract called re-record policies. So any of the songs that you record under the duration of your contract, you have like X amount of time before you can re-record it. But I was like, man, I need to re-record it and figure out like how it will Shazam. Um, meanwhile, I knew Water Found was a bigger song, but I knew that like labels were paying attention to the iTunes charts, the Shazam charts. So I was like, if I can get the song to register on Shazam and then he dances to it and it has a moment, like I'll, maybe I'll get another deal and they can buy back some of those old songs and I can start again. Um, and that's what happened. So he danced to the song and then, you know, I went the next day it was like number one on iTunes or top 10. I started getting calls, you know, and I was like, all right, let's go. We're, we're back in business. Shout out that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I'm actually going to go see him right after Did this. Did he He's win the competition? Yeah, he, he didn't, but in my heart... <laughs> He did. <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's actually so popping on TikTok right now. He's he? like 32 million followers. It's Who is insane. he? His name is Mark Hanna. Wait, I'm not I'm big up. on the dance side of TikTok. Is that what he normally That's posts? That's what he does. He dances. I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah, I've so. seen him at like VidCon. Is he like Probably. a younger kid? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, a younger yeah. kid. He's I awesome. I think, okay, this is very weird. So I went to hang out with the guy that created... Uh, everybody loves Raymond yesterday. That's amazing. And Ray Romano. Yeah, yeah. Well, him, I've, he's been on the podcast, but everybody. Ray Romano's been on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sat right where you're sitting. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I love Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy that created it, uh, Phil Rosenthal, I went over his house uh, to help him with something, and the guy that makes all the posters, like he made the poster for Coco and uh, Cars. Whoa. Anyway, he was there. Very random. And then he brought up that kid. He goes, wait. He's like, what do you do? I was like, oh, I make videos. A lot of my stuff goes well on TikTok. And then he's like, wait, I live next to a TikToker. And he literally brought up that kid's name. Okay. And they live right next to each other. Well, there you, I'm very small world. world. Yeah, yeah, that's I'll go, crazy. I'll go stop by Phil's house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's up? He'll say, why are you here? I'll say, 
I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's different type of money. You. There's I went over there. There's different type of money in this world, and that guy's got it. Well, that guy has it all. Um, now I know what to ask for when I go. <laughs> okay. There's two things I love in this world: sports and money. And the one thing that makes me not like sports as much as money is because I can't make money watching sports. And that has changed with Prize Picks. Jared, tell them. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had this football season, winning up to 25 times my money. Do you, you don't even understand what a 25 times multiplier is? Huh? You put in your money and you win 25 times the, what you put in. So you're saying if you put in $100, you'd get $2,500 if you win. If you math at me one more time, I'll break your nose. Why don't you keep talking about prize picks and how great it is, huh? All you have to do to win money is select two or more players and then pick more or less on their projected stats. This week, I have Patrick Mahomes getting more than 260 and a half passing yards, Travis Etienne getting more than 67 and a half rush yards, and T. Higgins getting more than 41 and a half receiving yards. And I'm going to get a lot of money for that. You can also do it during basketball season. Pick your best players, see how they're going to do. And if you watch basketball like me, you know what's going to happen because you follow the trends and you can make yourself some actual good coin. Take your family out for a nice vacation. Ever heard of a vacation? Yeah, your family would actually like to go on it. Huh? Prize Picks is also the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. That means if your player gets hurt in the first half of the game and doesn't come back in the second, your player is rebooted. Re what? Booted. That's great. And right now, if you want to get your money game up while watching the games, Prize Picks is doing a first deposit match up to $100. That means you put in $100, you get $100 back. That's $200. That's $100 free dollars with prize picks so to get that hundred dollar deposit match go to prizepicks.com slash dropouts and use code dropouts okay can you repeat what i said go to prizepicks.com slash dropouts and use code dropouts to get a money match guarantee up to a hundred dollars how about that huh it's amazing Thank you're you, amazing prize too picks. it is holiday season you know what that means christmas parties it means going out staying out late hanging out with friends and family and you know what you're going to do? If you do some sipping, you're going to get a little dehydrated. Take it from me. The best way to get rehydrated is liquid IV. Now, if you have a glass of water and you throw in liquid IV, it doubles your hydration rate. And you might be saying, Zach, that's fantastic. And to that, I'd say, of course it is. Liquid IV is literally the best thing you can put in your drink for taste and for rehydration. Huh? How about that? I love liquid IV. Zach, don't rip the mic off. You don't understand how much I love liquid IV. I feel so hydrated. I can rip anything right now. I get it, but you don't have to destroy the set. Why? Because that's it's that's bad. I don't. I, oh, why would why I would like would to apologize? The set be good, but also can I just say that I can you just prove to you that I actually do really like liquid IV? I it, think that strawberry is my enough. favorite flavor. That's fantastic. You, you know what mine is? What? Sugar-free grape. Although I have been liking the sugar-free lemon and lime recently. Grapes are yummy when they're in your tummy. I understand why you like them too. With three times the electrolytes as the leading sports drink, no artificial sweeteners or added sugar, and eight essential vitamins and minerals for day. Daily hydration, you can't go wrong with Liquid IV. Where the hell do people get it? Well, Zach, right now you can get Liquid IV in bulk at Costco or online. I want it 20% off. Okay, well, you can go online to liquidiv.com and use code dropouts to get it for 20% off. Uh, I'll do it. Thank you, Liquid IV. And then thank you, Liquid IV from me more. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. If you're feeling sad in your brain and you need to talk to someone, BetterHelp is the place to go. BetterHelp.com is a therapy session where it makes it easy for you to talk to someone who's qualified for you to be happy in your brain. We go to the gym for our bodies. We eat healthy for our bodies. Yet sometimes we don't let our brains get the nourishment it needs. And how does it get that nourishment? Through talking through your emotions, problems, and thing that's going on in your life. I cannot stress enough how amazing therapy is just to reset your brain and get you in that positive flow, flow state to have your best life you possibly can. And the easiest way to get into therapy is better help betterhelp.com because it's all online you don't even have to leave your house and it's a good it's a good starter and longevity model for getting your mental health straight and narrow 
And going off of what Zach said, most people think that they need some big traumatic life event for them to need therapy. But the truth is, is that we all have mental health that we may or may not. You get your oil of. changed in your car, don't you? Exactly. You got to tune it up and your brain is very similar to an engine. You tune that thing up to keep it running smooth, right, Jared? That you nailed it. If you're not using therapy, you're only hurting yourself. You should use therapy to help yourself. Big jingle guy. So if you feel like you need a tune up on your mind, give better help therapy a try. All you need to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a licensed therapist. It's entirely online and it's designed to be flexible to your schedule. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash dropouts today to get 10% off your first month. Betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash dropouts to get 10% off your first month. Kiss me when you see me. Baby boys and baby girls, because dropouts is better helped. Thank you, better help. Call me if you got better help. Cool. So he dances, bomb, yeah. bomb, bomb. He's hitting the whoa or whatever he's doing. Yep. Uh, and the performance goes well. Yeah. And then how soon after that? So it charts. How do people get a hold of you? What? So I had, there have been other people who I had met, like, even like prior to signing the deal um, with my previous label. And then people were kind of like aware of me. Some people were like, oh, let's have a meeting with this kid, you know, and see. But uh, no one really wanted to, like, pull the trigger and sign me. And uh, I couldn't do it on my own because I, I, I spent all the money that I had had from my previous deals, like, kind of getting started again. I was still living at home. I still live at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to burp. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it was the most, burp. yeah, that, that burp was a whisper. Yeah. Um, if you say you're going to burp, I, I want to smell ASMR. it. It's ASMR. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, and I, uh, okay, what was I saying? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Um, so then I started getting calls, and it was kind of like a bidding work kind of vibe. But I had, I knew that, like, the most important thing was my songs, and I needed to keep writing songs, and people didn't want to get back. And I write and stuff, and I can write songs by myself, but I don't produce, you know, like mm -hmm. what, what you're doing. I can't make tracks or whatever. So um, I so, needed to get back in with producers. Are we going to say? No, no, no. I was, the, uh, when it comes to songwriting, mm -hmm. um, Obviously, you said you're like, oh, I didn't really care about school and education, yet you have a very nice vernacular and a way of stringing, you know, words together where it sounds mm. pretty. Thank where, you. where did that talent come in? Uh, I, I think it might be genetic. I don't know, like my mom. Because <laughs> I didn't invest any time in reading. Like, <laughs> you know? um, I don't know. I like language. Uh, and it's funny. I was looking at, uh, I just got bored during the pandemic. And I was like, I wonder, I want to go through like my family tree. And I found like, you know, some great uncles who were also poets. Um, and I was reading some of their stuff and it was strikingly similar to the things oh, that wow. I write. And I'm like, oh, it doesn't seem like it's a coincidence, you know. Um, so it was all handed to you by people that did it in past lives. You've done nothing. Could so be, yeah, I've, yeah. I've done nothing. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, I feel like I am just a product of you know, yeah, all of the... That is true. <laughs> <laughs> You're just an apple on the vine, baby. That's how I feel. Um, it's all just his ancestors trying to live vicariously through uh, him. I feel I feel that's kind of what I what like, I am. Let's be famous. Let's be the, sick. I am the sum of all of those all, all of those things. And yeah, I don't know. My they they had to sacrifice a lot for me to be here. So I appreciate that. I get to enjoy the the, the fruits, fruits of all of the things that they've sacrificed for me to <laughs> have this wonderful life. So where did your your songwriting's very like storytelling based? Mm. Where did that come from? What inspired that? Is that just something you've always been interested in? Um, I think so. Yeah, um, I love stories, and uh, I love, I love the way that stories help people relate to a message. Um, I think that uh, stories also make sense for me because I'm very like, so this happens, and then this happens, and then this <laughs> happens, and in a story. Um, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, yeah. And so for me, like, there's a lot of music that I listen to that the lyrics are very abstract. And they make me feel things, but um, I like to know, you know, my favorite artists say things and they say the things um, very uh, directly. Um, and they, you know, how you feel about it and how it makes you feel, obviously that varies from person to person, but there's never a, there's never a, everyone can look at the song and get something out of it, but no one ever goes, oh, I think it's about this or I think it's about this. And everyone should sort of be in agreement on what the song is about. Yeah. And so, um, and like I said, how that makes you feel is up to you, but there's no negotiating. Do you listen to Zach Bryan by chance? I don't, but I, people tell me that I should. No, it's, you guys just have very similar writing styles as far mm. as, you know, those are my favorite type of music was where you can tell a story in, in a way that's like, um, with lyrics that obviously stick with you. But I, I love the narrative of stories because I feel like I'm there. And I, I guess it's my love for like TV film mm. that I feel like I'm, 
Like there's other stuff like shake that thing in the club. And that that's good for sometimes, but I like to listen <laughs> to a story of, about of how you progress through um through any situation. So that's that's pretty cool. But you were on um you were kind of on a timeline of I think we cut you off. I don't know what you were I don't remember what I was saying, but um basically I got the opportunity um to, you know, meet with all these labels and um uh, during that process, I said to the labels, I said, look, if you want to sign me, then you have to show me that you can help me make a record. You know, please put me in the studio with people and let me write songs. And so I kind of stayed in that period for like six months or whatever before I signed a deal and just kind of worked with a bunch of new people. Um, but interestingly enough, one of the people that I had reached out to when I was like 14, 15, um, was this guy named Lucas Keller. He manages producer named Nolan Lambrosa, who I ultimately, when I, people started calling me up to try and sign me, I... Uh, I hit him up. I was like, hey, there's a lot of heat right now. Like, can I work with Nolan? Uh, and he said, yeah. And then we wrote Let Me Down Slowly together. I've heard um, that one. So that, that one was, did decent for you in your career? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it, was, okay. it was a good one. Um, <laughs> and then so, down to the, the scent amount, how much money did that song make you? Um, Got it right I, here in case I, you get it wrong. I, you know what? You should ha ask Atlantic Records. They'll have a, they'll have a better accounting. They have all my money. So <laughs> they're here. They're on next. They're on next podcast. Yeah, I'll, they, I'll make sure I, I bring it up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then I, I put out Let Me Down Slowly, and that was like really the thing that kind of got the, the, the wheels moving again. But there was no like moment where it happened. It's just sort of slowly. Did you time. think, well, when you put it, when you have a song that's obviously went as crazy as that one did, after you're done with it, do you know the hits? No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but for some reason I knew that one, but only because I played it for other people, and they were like, "Oh damn, this is good," you know. Um, you, you saw the reactions in like real time yeah. from showing it to people. I, I do have, I do wonder. So you know, this song pops off. It's probably one of the better things that have happened to you in your career. It's like, oh, this really like put me on, not the map because you're already there, but it really like stamped it in. Um, then after you have something so giant, how is the feeling? to then try to, okay, I got to top I that. It's like the worst part. Yeah. yeah. Just feeling like I got to do that again. <laughs> I feel like I'm only just now kind of like recovering from that. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's one but of the things that I grapple with. But how do, so how do you deal with it though? Like say you have a big video or like even, even if you have like a big TikTok mm -hmm. and then the next one is not as big, it like fucks with you. Like how do you, how do you deal with that? I, I, I guess I kind of just see it as just running water uh, where, you know, you just got to keep creating and creating and eventually more is, more is going to come out. I mean, I, I think mine's differently because obviously with a song, it's like listen to and people go and watch you for it and people go to stadiums, they sing it to you. Like mine, it's, you know. It lives on past yeah, just, mine just one view or two or a couple views that you see it on TikTok or something. Mm. Yeah, I feel like comedy gets shelved a little. Like you're not going to go back to the same joke a hundred times. Like once you hear it once, it's like, maybe, okay, maybe I Maybe the it. same comedy special though. Yeah, yeah. Well, well one day when I'm able to do that, that'd be sick. We'll, we'll do a joint one. We'll do a song and comedy special in one. I'm with it. But I have to sing and you have to do comedy. Well, people will go back and listen to your podcast more than once, I'm sure. That's There's stupid. An, an episode. Yeah, you yeah, think no, so? Yeah, no, they're pretty bad. Yeah, our podcasts are terrible. What are you talking about? No, I, <laughs> but do you think like, do you think that, you don't think, are there, I don't know what I was going to say. I'm sure people do. I, I'm pretty sure they do because like Spotify rap just came out, you okay, know, and all right. people had, like have been tagging us in stories Congrats. and stuff. Thank you. And one person had like, they had listened to like 9,000 minutes like, of our does, podcast. It's not even possible. Right? I, was 9, just like, I was like, I know we are nowhere cl <laughs> close to that. So yeah, in a sense, people do right. live on or like keep repeating the well, I saw the yours. Podcast. You listened to like 60,000 minutes. I did. Yeah. I listened to of 8, your own 000. podcast. No, 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 music of music. I would okay. kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you listen to, yeah, you, I listened to just under like 60,000 minutes. And that was honestly kind of a slow year for me because I started getting more into like podcasts and stuff like right. that. And you're producing music now too. Are you mm -hmm. going to put out music? I, I try. See, the thing is I, I'm in a very opposite boat of you. It's where I cannot sing to save myself, you know? Okay. And, uh, and so it, it's, sometimes hard to find the time to like go and like work with an artist and sit down in a studio. Do you and write. demo your own stuff though? Like God, no, I've, I've done that a couple times with people that I'm working with so I can send them and be like, this is how I imagine like this lyric being mm. sung. Um, and it is just atrocious. It's really bad. You try to use the AI stuff. You can, I've been AI thinking voice. about that. Yeah. I, I've really been thinking about that or just AI him. I know. Well, that's what you I know should. What? 
YouTube just did it. Oh, I just, did, I'm doing a you. thing with YouTube the, um, where it's like a it's a it's a beta program. It's very new, um, but they've done an AI of my voice, and you can tell it to write a song about something, and it will do it in my voice. Oh, we're gonna use you, dude! I am yeah, ripping kind your of, whole style tomorrow. Go ahead, it's, <laughs> it's, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but you could you could do that. But I feel like maybe your maybe your voice is better than you. Huh? You'd give yourself <laughs> it's a, trust me, brother. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> brother. There's there's things in life you're gonna be right about. This isn't one of them. Do you, do you sing? Uh, no. No, go ahead. In the shower sometimes. Well, just, okay. well, why don't you sing the national anthem right now? <laughs> no. That's the hardest song to sing. See? Go ahead. No, I'm okay. I, do you want to impress good. him? He's Grammy I, nominated. I'm not going to impress him. I'm not actually, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we could spread that rumor. <laughs> I, I was close. I was close. Maybe maybe next year. Yeah, no, next year. I have. Uh, I actually know the Grammy people really well. We'll get you in there. Tell them I said what's up. <laughs> um, no, no. Actually, that's the person married to my grandpa. Okay, Different I'm Grammy. <laughs> Different Grammy. <laughs> but I do know her well. Um, oh, oh, I had a question. So all of your memory has been wiped off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. All of your songs, anything you've ever done, but you get to leave one song with the human race. What would it be? Of mine or just of, of any song? Uh, of, of yours, if that's um, okay. Everything, all all traces of me are gone. are gone. I get to leave a one song. That's hard to say because I feel like I still have some of my best music in me. Do you have but. any music coming out possibly December 8th? Oh, sh I, I'm not supposed to say it. Well, <laughs> now, we I thought go. we had to say it. <laughs> Oh, will I have announced it by then? Okay, if not, it's, hey, world premiere. It comes out on December 8th. Um, oh, wait, next week is the week of the... Oh, yeah, I will, probably will have announced it. Yeah, I have a song coming out on December 8th. Um, I just found out really recently. I told him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I told him. I was, I was battling um, with my... I wanted to put it out December 8th. I was battling with my label to let me put it out because it's like a weirder story song. So I guess if I could leave behind a song, it'd be that one. I sent it to you. It's, I sent my therapist to therapy. Oh, I've listened yeah. to it. Okay, do you like it? I can say, yeah. What Dude, the hell? I, you didn't tell me he sent you unreleased stuff. He didn't say I could share with anybody, brother. <laughs> and we've, got a, appreciate we, that. we've got a connection where we talk once every three years. So yeah, we're, deep. yeah we got a pretty deep connection. <laughs> huh? Okay, so you leave that one. You leave the new one. Mm-hmm. Okay, it feels like a cop out PR answer, but I'll let yeah, it happen. Yeah, it was, it was. But what was the name of it? <laughs> it's called "I Sent My Therapist to Therapy." Oh wow, it's a story about like me that. sending my therapist to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> true story. Almost true. Um, not really. Um, but I have a therapist I talk to all the time, which I, I really um, have been trying to force myself to do because it makes me feel better. But then I met with um, um, uh, someone else just to sort of augment what I was already kind of doing, like another mental health professional. And I just sort of was pretty candid with them about how I felt. And I was sort of like asking them like, well, so what, what do you do? You know? <laughs> exactly. You know, I just want to know like, Hey, I'm here, but also I'm very goal oriented. So I was like, these are my goals or what, or, or I was asking like, what should the goal be? And like, how do we accomplish them? And do you think that like, you know, how are we going to sort of like, decide whether or not we're making progress, you know, because like, I'm going to pay you this money. And like, you know, I want to know like how this is going to work. And he was like very offended. Um, <laughs> and I thought I was like, but aren't you like supposed to like not take this personally? He was like, I'm not. I'm like, sounds like you are. <laughs> Do you want to talk about yeah, it? He was, I don't think I'm going to be treating you. I was like, fair enough. <laughs> and so after that, I was like, oh man, maybe I'm just that fucked up. Like, maybe I'm, and then I was like, after this, he's probably going to need a therapist. So in the song, I guess I give it away, but in the song, it's like the story like I go see my therapist and I talk to him and he's like hey like you can you can tell me anything like trust me and then the chorus is like wait actually fuck I think I need help <laughs> this is crazier and the second verse he's like you know you're kind of on your own the last verse is you run into him and he's like hey I got to tell you a story and then you're like my doctor found a doctor and his doctor told him and that he had to go to therapy. So wow. it's this recursive sort of. <laughs> yeah, I like every, that. Everyone so, is going to be going to therapy now because of me. <laughs> so yeah, you always tell me we have a better help ad this week. <laughs> Yo, hey, I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you enter people's lives and damage them in such a way that they need <laughs> psychiatric help. Yeah, I um, suppose so. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, this thing, is it, you go see a therapist for, is it anxiety? What's the? For everything. Gotcha. Just to talk about, yeah, like depression for ADHD, anxiety, just like to sort of just help. Help me with the trials and tribulate. Tri uh, yeah. When you tribulation. when you when you enter <laughs> the dark zone of Alex psyche, um, yeah. what what are the best ways to get yourself out of it? Because I think a lot of listeners can you know relate to that. What are the best ways to get myself out of it? Well, I talk to my mom, which is great because she's down the hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's. <laughs> hey, mom. I say, mom. Sad again. <laughs> mom. Mom. 
Can you make, can you make me pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> she makes you pancakes. No, she can't cook. Um, oh. This is the first thing that came to my mind. But she does she does know how to heat up the pizza we get from Trader Joe's. So. Oh, hey, you guys man. are living. That shit, that shit hits. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have a game plan of, well, I want to actually, I want to hear this first. Oh, uh, what do I do? I don't know. I see a therapist and I, uh, I try to, if I can get myself to exercise, I try. Um, and then sometimes like, you know, well, originally when I had reached out to you about like hanging out and doing this, um, I was really depressed and then I couldn't like, I didn't respond to messages. Like I couldn't get myself out of bed. And then it, then ultimately I was like, okay, to feel better, I need to follow up on all the things I said I was going to do that I didn't do. So here I am. Wow. Making, I'm here. I am making myself feel better. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So we are the reason. You are the catalyst they, for my mental health recovery. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was praying about it last night. I was like, please let me be the catalyst for his mental health recovery. And it happened. Thank you. Or did I wish upon a star? <laughs> I wish upon a star. This wasn't God. Okay. Yeah, this Thank was, you, star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. Um, I'm curious. So what's the process like for you creating a song? Do you like write it out and kind of demo it yourself first and mm. then uh, say um, Nolan like builds uh, a so an instrumental around that or does it sometimes the instrumental come first and then you write just how it feels? Sometimes the instrumental comes first. It depends. I do it differently. Uh, I've, I've done it differently throughout the years. Um, I used to just start on piano and just trying to poke around, you know, find something that sounded good to me uh, and then try to sing over it and then sort of let it, the music dictate sort of how the lyrics it, were going to be written over it. But um, now, or at least what I've been doing lately um, is I'll just, I kind of treat it like more like work. Like I'll sit down on a weekend before I have a week of songwriting sessions and I'll go through books and, and websites and articles and pick out words that I think are appealing or like song, like song title ideas. And then I'll bring them into these different sessions and, Sometimes the producer will have like a little musical thing already planned and I'll mm -hmm. try to pick from my list, you know, things that I feel like fit over the music. Um, and so that's what I've been doing lately. But that's what I did with this song. I had this title on a notepad. Um, I sent my therapist to therapy and I hadn't found the music yet. And I went into this session. Um, it's like one of the last songwriting sessions I did for the album. Uh, and uh, the guy I was working with had this beat. It was the beat that's on the song. And I was like, I think I have something that fits over that. So I wrote all the lyrics and melody, and he kind of like sort of massaged the beat around how the lyrics and melody were evolving in real time. And we wrote it in like 30 minutes. That's awesome. It's, it's in 30 minutes. Right? <laughs> and then we wrote another song right after that. But but not all days are like that. Some days it takes the whole day to write the song. How, how yeah. do you go between... Obviously, you have deadlines for a label, and it's like, all right, I gotta put this out for them to still like me, and for my own like wanting to stay relevant. Yet, I want I want these songs to be authentic and come to me as I'm inspired. How do you balance of I gotta hit this deadline versus I want to put out stuff that's true to me? You know, how do I balance that? Well, I think that like my deadlines are a, a lot more strict than I think what the label actually requires of me because I have a lot of things that I want to achieve um, in order in order to like do that. what if we had to ask <laughs> I want to play uh, arenas you know yeah. soon um, and I'd like to um, I'd like to get a Grammy or just be nominated um, I'd like to have a uh, number one record you know I'm not there um, I think the cool thing though about my music is that although I'm not like the most like culturally relevant artist like the, my music um, because it's not so attached to the culture as the culture changes, my music um, still um, has utility. So like you don't have to, it doesn't have to uh, play off of the culture to be relevant. It's just re relevant to people who want to listen to it because they like it, not mm. because it sort of has it's any It's following a trend to, yeah. or something. But uh, I just, uh, how do I keep up with that? I don't know, man. I, I, I kill myself to do this stuff, man. I really like, I, I don't, I don't do anything else. I eat, sleep and breathe. It's all I've wanted since I was like 14. So like I had, it has to happen. So I just forced myself to go in the studio and write the songs. I wrote like 130 songs for this record and I didn't want to, I felt like crap, man. I've been depressed this whole year. I don't want to do anything, but I know if I don't do it, I'm going to look back at the end of my life and, and feel like I should have done it. Once you have accomplished those things, because obviously you're so driven. If I do, yeah. I would like to. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. What I, I guess where would then this the the balance of self, not the balance, but the purpose of like self worth come to you? It's like okay, I'm now I'm striving for this, and that's going to give me that purpose. Okay, but you've achieved those things. 
are you scared a little bit of it's like okay then what is the i always feel like i have like a i'll worry about it then mentality (laughs) that's future it's a good problem to have you know um and uh, i think i do struggle with the fact that like my self-worth is kind of based on the amount of utility i feel like i'm providing the world so it's like when people like my songs and they're using them i feel valuable and when they're not as popular i feel less valuable i think that's a problem but you know i don't know i'm still deciding whether or not i think that the point of life is for like me to be happy you know i don't know if that's like the goal i, I think there is a similar thing um in all entertainment and especially like social media comedy music where people can see analytically how we're doing um i think there's something damaging to that where mm-hmm. You know, like my mom's a teacher. She can go and have the worst day ever, but she can come home and be like, you know, it was a normal day and there's nobody knows exactly like how you did at your job. But I feel like even say I put out a comedy video that just flops every or it flops for weeks, months. Uh, people can go be like, he's not doing as well as he used to. Right. People can go to yours like, oh, streaming numbers might be down. He's not doing as well as he used to. It's, it's weird that people can see how you're doing at your profession. It's, it's very uncomfortable because also people are like very, um, people are like their brains and their nervous system and everything is sort of like attuned to like how the hierarchy of society works and their, you know, how they feel valued feels like is based on how they feel like they fit into sort of like the cultural pantheon of, you know, uh, of the world and, and sort of like, as that's sort of like adjusting in real time. You're like at the in the morning you wake up feeling like, okay, I've ascended the hierarchy. And then you're like, yep, yeah, actually, <laughs> actually I didn't. I'm actually back at the bottom. And I think that it's a weird thing, but also not only is it, it doesn't, the numbers don't tell the full story because they don't tell how things are going to sort of evolve across time. And also, you know, not all numbers in statistics are created equally like a person you know not all streams are created equal like one person could have cried to your song you know whereas like one person maybe listened to a tiny part of it while they were like having a drink it's not it's not the same thing um but yeah that fucks with me i can't remember what you said and now i've been talking (laughs) for a minute but i was going somewhere good i know it (laughs) i guess what's the most fulfilling part now um about is it do you enjoy doing the in-person shows the Um, most fulfilling thing is that i get to um i get to like i get to uh uh, I got. I can afford to buy my family things um, with the money that I've earned from making music. So, well, what I, was like the best present? You're, it doesn't have to be like uh, the most expensive, but what, what was something that was like pretty cool? It though? was cool, like being at like my mom's birthday. I still have to get my dad a birthday <laughs> present, but being at my mom's like birthday dinner, and then like the bill came, and I was like, oh, it's you know, it's already paid. Yeah, know? that's that's pretty sick. That's rad. No, I uh, I used to like beg my mom for just some change to take the bus back to Vegas so I could go there for Christmas. And then, I mean, to then be able to go all families together and then say that same thing. It's like the bill's taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, hurt, it does hurt my pocket a little bit more than yours does, but, <laughs> no, I, no, but no. I will say I need to pay rent too. That's my mom's like, <laughs> my mom's like, you need to pay rent. I was like, Hey, look, you're going to have to evict me for <laughs> like, I looked up the tenant laws in California. I'm like, technically you're like, oh, oh, you I got, got squatters. squatters right? I was like, if you, if you create an inhospitable living environment, I'm going to sue you. I mean, you'll be hearing from my lawyer yeah, so. I mean, <laughs> for not getting those pancakes. Yeah, well exactly. I was like, you better, Better make them. No, I don't say that to my mom. <laughs> I'll tell her. That's I'm going to get smacked when I get home. Put me in a group chat with your mom and I'll, I'll okay. be the heavy hammer. <laughs> Fair enough. Listen, we got to get in the kitchen and we got to start making these pancakes fluffy. <laughs> all right. Are you um, a peanut butter on pancakes type of gal? Uh, I could be. I could be. Have you um, never tried it? Uh, No. Oh, uh, you're missing I out. I think you're missing out. Peanut butter okay. on pancakes. Throw some syrup on there. You're living your life. Are you thinking that you'll pursue music in a professional capacity? I definitely want to like okay. uh, we're really focusing on like the podcast and starting this media company and stuff. And so right now music is kind of it's just kind of like a side get a uh, side gig, um, kind of like a passion project. But once we get to a place where kind of like the, the business that we're working on right now is being run by other people and we're no longer like the day to day, I would like to then pursue it professionally cool. and super seriously like Sweet. what you were saying how you just eat sleep and breathe right. and he'll leave me i'm not gonna leave you if you are when you be good, big you. and famous like i can see the connection you guys have we have look no at, connection look, at look how far eyes. away he is look at those eyes. <laughs> yeah he's only he looking at me like he hasn't made it don't That's work love. with don't work with him because if you guys work together and you guys both get famous you guys are gonna be hanging out all the time <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that one song that you did it was like uh you wanted indie on it but it was like the dark one uh it was i did a remix of tate mccray's bad ones oh yeah play that 
Uh, you want me to play it right now? Wait, like, I have a question. A what simple, happens man? if I have to pee? Oh, you, you go can pee, man. Get up can and I, go can pee. I you can also pee? just leave. Like, there's no, no, there's 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 no, no rules, rules here. here. I've been holding it in for like 20 minutes. No, no go pee. Okay, go pee real quick. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Also, you should know that you don't have any toilet paper in there. Oh, shit. Yeah, That's I, her fault. I, had to use, well, I, didn't I got a slight sp spray on the bowl, <laughs> and I used a tissue paper to wipe it off. But it's a good thing I didn't have to poop. Because <laughs> yeah, I'd, been, I'd, been, I'd been up the creek without a paddle. Yeah, you you, know what I mean? you could have texted me, and I would have carried you upstairs like at a bidet. <laughs> I would have screamed to you. I would have said, I need toilet paper. It's okay. <laughs> would you have been that blunt? Yeah, sure. Nice. Well, I don't have a choice. I mean, it's like, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't walk around with a dirty ass. Yeah. Well, you can. You could. Are you a bidet guy? Uh, No. I tried one for the first time when I went to Korea. Felt good, didn't it? Honestly, yeah, it was awesome. But, like, it felt weird that I enjoyed it. I don't know. I, <laughs> Maybe I don't know. question some I things? Just, no, no, no. They didn't. No, I mean, it, I just, I was just, I don't know. It just felt unnatural to me. I just, but I liked it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. If I would use one again, though, because for something, for some reason, like, because they have public bidets in a lot of places in Asia, but like that hose has been really close to other people's bottoms. Yeah, know? I don't yeah, know like, if I trust public. There's got to be a residue. Yeah. yeah. Wait, Jared, do you want to exploit yourself? Yeah, oh, please play your music. God. The way that I make music because I can't sing, I love uh, like remixing other songs um, that, okay. that I enjoy. Tay McCray's a smoke show. <laughs> okay. Somebody's got to put it out there. She's also got the number one song in the world. She has more Smoke show. listeners on Spotify now than Beyonce does. I know we're supposed to be promoting crazy. you, but yeah, well, yeah, she's great. I don't I want. I want to fall awesome. in love. Um, her music is great. I think she's. Um, yeah, she's very young. How old is she? 20. Oh God, <laughs> is she under eighteen? No, she's how, 20. how old are you? I'm twenty eight. Okay, cool. I'm twenty five. Okay. All how right. old are you? I'm twenty nine. Dude. <laughs> We're pretty, we both we all watch dragon tales here oh, um, i love dragon tales wait 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 we said above 18 yeah how old? i think she's 20 oh, she's 20 that's a little too young <laughs> no um, that's okay it's okay I mean, to you be can a, say she's very, she's very pretty okay but i i led with that's a smoke show <laughs> i don't know if i would have led with that you yeah know? that's a bit aggressive <laughs> and i use my diaphragm I, I became aware of her music when she was like really really young so um you know i wouldn't i wouldn't lead with that you know personally but <laughs> you get a pass because can you guys do a song together I don't know, maybe. Fine. Um, but what am I supposed I, to do? I'm, I'm definitely, a, I think she's crushing it. Oh, yeah, she's, she's killing it. So you it. remixed the Tame Crazy. So, song. yeah, this is her song, Bad Ones, which is a few years uh, from a few years ago. Uh, but this is, this is the one that Zach was talking about earlier. I like this one. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Is this. What, can I hear the original first? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I haven't yeah. heard it's the, the same song. song. <laughs> I haven't heard the song, so I won't know. What you did. Here we go. Here How we did go. you get her her isolated vocal? Uh, I use this program called La La La. An AI one? Yeah. Yep. yep. So You got to remix one of my songs. I would love to. I'll send you all the stems. You should remix my newest one. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. That was, I was actually thinking about, uh, I listened to your newest, or the one you recently released. Different Kind of Beautiful? Yeah, Different yeah. Kind of Beautiful. I wrote um, that about you guys. No, I know. <laughs> oh, trust me. We we heard the lyrics. And I there. thought it was weird, so I didn't text you about it. Okay. I was like, this is strange that you did this about me. But, but, you know, I'm down for a kiss. I was kind of curious about that one because, uh, you know, most of your style is kind of that, like, indie singer-songwriter pop with, like, a little bit of electronic elements in it sometimes. That one, at least to me, was very reminiscent of kind of like R and B. Like, yeah, it almost reminded me of like early weekend. Yeah, I just felt like it was time to try some different stuff. Okay, so I was I was curious about that. And yeah. did you and Nolan work on that as well? Or? No, I did it with a different producer. I worked okay. with a, a duo named Stargate. Um, who, oh, and they're awesome. I think we've. Do they DJ? They do. I think we saw them or saw them DJ at the the. Flash premiere. Yeah, take I mean, that. They're, they're legends. I mean, they've yeah. done like they did all of the Rihanna stuff. They'd, yeah, uh, they were they, kick ass. They're amazing. I mean, they did. They've done a bunch of Coldplay stuff. Do you think they use reverb? They uh, they know how to. They do. They, yes, they did it on my. <laughs> they use it on my voice. Yeah. He has one like music. No, no. Hey, term. look, that's a good. I'm like, wow, this guy. Are this you guy sure you gets it. No, I, <laughs> listen, I. Should I you overdo this? Guys, stop. Wait, let's hear. Let's hear the remix now. Sorry, I just didn't. I, I needed a uh, context. Cool. That's sick. Thank you. So like my my style, I, I grew up listening to um, like Elenium and the Chainsmokers Sweet. and stuff like that. Th those were like the first people that got me into making music. 
And uh, I was like, oh, that's sick. I would love to make music like that. So it started off, I started off very like future based kind of that's that scene. And then uh, over the years started like toning it down okay. a little more and developing my own style. But that was the one that he was talking about. Um, Sounds great. Thank you. You didn't sell your soul to the devil, right? Uh, he doesn't bargain. Yeah, hey, let's go. <laughs> I did. You know, sometimes I feel like I did. I wrote that song about. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say it. I wrote it. Well, <laughs> he goes. You know, maybe I shouldn't no, say it. No, because <laughs> what I wrote it about, like at the time, I don't. Sometimes you feel like a certain way in a moment, but it's not necessarily indicative of like your sort of the way you feel concretely about like a situation or yeah. a person or whatever. But I wrote it about my label. It was like in a renegotiation, <laughs> and they just like weren't. They weren't giving me what I wanted. And I as like I always get sort of like my uncle is a is a businessman. He always tells me like it's not personal, it's business, you know, and I'm always like trying to sort of live my life by that. But I'm a very uh, emotional person, so I get attached <laughs> and then, you know, I start to think like, "Oh, I'm friends with these people." You yeah. Know? Like then I got sad and I was like, you know, thinking about what my uncle told me, I'm like, "Man, the devil doesn't bargain, you know. You can't." <laughs> Do most people think it's about a toxic ex, I assume? Yeah, but that's like the trend on TikTok, so I just like jump on it. I'm shameless on TikTok. Like I I feel like I've destroyed like any <laughs> any semblance of a brand that I had. I'm just like I listen to my songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do, man. You got to get in the rap race. Yeah, I suck. I suck at it and I've embarrassed myself, but I'm like, now I'm too deep in. So I'm just like, yeah, you got to go, you know? but don't think that I'm, I'm self-aware. Like I know, I know it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. You know? Well, the devil does not. Bark Are you ready to get on TikTok and start fucking? Oh God. No, Yo. that's the thing. I'm, I like I you understand. guys crush it on TikTok, by the way. Uh, yes. Well, we just do it for women, so like, <laughs> you, so I don't want to get a lot of followers, so I can go to like, look at this, and then women are like, oh my gosh, I want to get with you now. Okay, you know? and it hasn't it, worked. Does it work? I was gonna say not yeah. once. They're like, you pretentious. It's not work for me yet either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if we go out together with? And nice. we combine our. You understand that these added together. This is how many yeah. followers we have. Trust me. You well, can come hang out with my parents. <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah. Well, we're playing Monopoly. Zach's gonna be there. He's bringing the Capri Suns. <laughs> I'm excited for you, man. I think that's gonna be great. And Thank also, you. I'm excited for you to put out a comedy special. Yeah, right. And you could, we could do something together. It could, a dual show in L.A. I yeah. Everyone's gonna come out and it's like, I can't wait to hear lovely, beautiful songs. Do you do, you do open I'm mics? Just out there. Yeah. How's that? How have you found that? Um. Okay. Open mics. So you do have a lot for practice, obviously. Yeah. But you go out and it's just a bunch of comics who also aren't good. Okay. And we're all waiting what to mean just- mean also aren't good? Well, we everybody's just like waiting to do their material so that nobody's actually listening to the person on stage. Right. So you don't actually get laughed. Like you don't know if it's funny or not. You're just like, I got to sit here for two hours to get five minutes to go up there. Okay. Um, so it's- What's the best one that you've done? Because I used to do, I've done all the open mics in LA. I used to do them all the time. You did open like yeah. comedy? I mean, so some of them are like El Cid oh, yeah, yeah. is like, they do like comedy and music. So I've been to all those. So what's, what's your favorite one? Um, I honestly don't even remember the names. Okay. I would just like Google or like a friend would go to one and we just sit there for hours and go do it. But my friend recently did a show. So I opened for him. Oh, and amazing. Then, Who's that? Uh, Jason Nash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, and then. Where we, was that? Uh, that was at the improv. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Like we do shows for our podcast. Like we, we did one in New York at City Winery. I don't know if you've ever been yeah, there. Yeah, I, I opened for Matas Yahoo there. Oh, hell yeah. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, so we did a, pod, a live podcast there. I got to do some stand-up there. And then uh, we did one in LA at Flappers. Okay. Um. So yeah, just like anywhere. When when was, when was is the next one? I, I don't know, dude. That's a good I didn't good know. Question. I want to go to one. Hell yeah. You should come up. I would, uh, I would love to. opening act. I would love to. I will, I'll open it up. I'll just, I'd love to just be there. I'd love to attend. Yeah, yeah. please attend. How did you like the um, live the only stuff? One there. It's great. Um, the live we, stuff is really fun, yeah. It's not like a giant room, but like we were lucky enough to sell it out. So it's like, it's weird going from this to, obviously you've had huge crowds, but to even see 300 people in front of you. It's amazing. We were like, yeah. what's up, dog? Like, <laughs> well, why are well, you guys here? Because like, you guys see like, you see you have all these subscribers and stuff, but then sometimes it's like hard to sort of, imagine that those are real human beings you're yeah. like oh you're a subscriber like, yeah that's crazy well how do you get on all these like you're on these like dating shows and stuff like that like how do you how does that those are well, hilarious so how i did you? i so my buddy is the one that has a channel and he does them all can um, i can you take me with you can i be come, on one dude uh there's, there's one, one tomorrow tomorrow can i go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's a it's all a right. it's a live show I'm it's down. in uh, downtown, so it's called Crowd Pleasers, so the people in the crowd get to vote by clapping who gets off the stage. Okay. So I'm going to be on there if you want to just come watch. It's going to be yeah, fun. I'll yeah, I'll go. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, so wait, so how did you, but I, I remember seeing this one where it's like, you're behind a curtain. Yeah, that's essentially what we're doing. Okay. Tomorrow, but it's going to be, yeah, the crowd decides who gets to stay in front of like 500 people, so it's okay. going to be fun. Oh, let's go. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm, go- I'm going to that. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to come, let me know. I'll get you guys tickets. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, my friend does it. Uh, so the first time I went on there, whatever, for whatever reason, the clip I was in, it it did like 100 million views or something. So Or something. Or He's something. He's like 100 million point two three. <laughs> so the, he just This got, was on your TikTok? Uh, it, this was on either mine or his or I don't know. One of ours. What was what was the which one was? I'm sure I've seen it. There's uh, there were several that <laughs> that did 100 million views across every across everything. Like That's huge. People would post it on like Twitter on this, um, but yeah, it would it would do well. So he like keeps bringing me back. Which Just, one was it? Can you pull it up? A few, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, a few of them have done decent. Post- you had to have gotten some dates from that. I got a lot of dates. And you're a tall, <laughs> you're a, you're a, a good looking guy. You're t- how tall? Are you six. I'm, six like, six, I'm only like six three. Only six three. Yeah. Okay. He's <laughs> um, six three. Yeah, I, was I like, only, But the thing is, I treat women so well that I I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm scared that my arms will hold them only in. You scroll down. Oh, you guys had Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh yeah, he was. You sick. guys are popping. You. Know? <laughs> we had Bobby Lee. He was a lot oh, of fun. Oh, I love Bobby Lee. Congratulations. You guys have done an amazing job. You're like really, you're doing it. That's Thank so you. cool. Especially now because like it's so saturated. There's so many podcasts. Like you yeah. guys are really doing it. If we had a fight, how would you make it up to me? Contestant number one. Hey, how are you? I missed you. Um, so I would gaslight you into well, I've seen this, yeah. <laughs> you thinking you're the problem. And then I would Never abuse mind. you emotionally <laughs> to you get to a point where you only get satisfaction from me and if I tell you you look good or anything oh like God. that. And then I would start <laughs> slightly treating you better so you'd think I'm changing. And then I w- it would be this off and on until you're almost hooked for life and I'm like almost like a drug to you where even when you're not around me and we break up, like you're yearning for me like nicotine. Oh, and if that doesn't work, I'd get uh, go to a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sign me up. It's all a movie, okay. All right, who are you most attracted to? The first one in the black jacket. Let's go. Is it the first one in the black jacket or did you say the guy behind <laughs> me? <laughs> so wait, did you actually go on a date with her? Um, I did not. I love the the comment, bro has anti-riz to the extent that it becomes riz. Have you watched the show, The have you seen the show The Button? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, you when Cody do Co does the, yeah. Oh, he does it? Cody Co does it? Oh, he commentates on it. Oh, it's he really does. Fun. And at one point they let him be the button. Oh, really? Yeah, it was pretty funny. I like, I love all the dating stuff. I watch all those reality TV shows that's should, oh that's what i do to make myself not depressed we should do those. one together one of these i want to i want to do one i yeah. saw kid Leroy was on the button oh yeah was like, he? i think we should yeah. do that you know what actually we should do that but what we should also do is a floor is lava or go on is it cake floor is lava oh yeah, floor i is fuck lava. with is it cake is it cake is amazing i want to be a that's judge on that show or they have floor is lava is like it's basically like an obstacle course that you have to go through but it's like you know floor is lava you can't like fall off. Wait, can I pitch you one of my big ideas? Please. Okay, so you know how the, they have these random warehouses everywhere where you go play paintball, you go do whatever this. We should get a giant warehouse and fill it with a ton of stuff. And um, instead of like escape rooms, whatever it is, you could play adult hide and seek. I like that. Or I have another idea. We could end world hunger. No! <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism! Oh, yeah. Socrates! Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's no. like, oh, we could help people. <laughs> no, I'm totally down for that, man. I would love to, but I, I love those those clips. I see them all the time, and you do so well on them. Okay, so wait. So are you on You're on the, are you on the apps? Do you, okay, on Hinge. If you're on Hinge, are you on Hinge? Yeah, I'm on you Hinge. put that as your video. That should be your, that should be your I, intro. It should be. I, that's, that's actually not. a really good idea. Are you on Hinge? Are you back on? Back in the race? I'm back in the race. Are you in the race? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a tough race. I have a song about it. I have a song about about dating apps. Oh, um, which one? It's it hasn't come out yet. It's called oh. it's called Pick Me. <laughs> okay. And then like and then parts of it, like the beginning is like, is it lying if I add a couple inches to my height? You know, say I'm five eleven when I'm only five nine. And then like the pre course is like we can say that we met at a party or through a friend, you know? Oh, yeah, that's so. pretty. Yeah, I'm excited for this. But uh, okay, so and you don't put those on there. I don't. What's your that profile? That seems like? a little bit pretentious. Do you want to? I'll I'll give it to you. All right, let's see <laughs> it. All right, I'm about to send you a like. I'm sending you a, I'm sending you a rose. You're probably behind the rose barrier, huh? Um, yeah. You got to pay to send you a like. Okay, there's my hingy hinge. Oh my gosh, dude, this guy. What's the number at? A I'm thousand? not even gonna say. It. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Never mind. I'm gonna get in trouble, dude. You're, okay, you're popping on here. Do we have? Yo, this. Look at. Can I show? Can I show? Yeah, yeah. You see this profile picture? The fucking turtleneck. Oh. How are we supposed to swab? How is anyone else supposed to have success on oh, here? Oh, put your bank you account on, on there and then uh, you at stadiums. <laughs> <laughs> like, That'll work. The soldier boys in a Denny's parking lot with the love of my life. I love it. Oh, is this your dog? Yeah. He's here. He's really? just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. He's All right. just crazy. Never mind. Don't listen That's to my. Oh, you got the you got the crowd pick. Have to. Oh, um, wow. 
I got, I'm one, on I got one of those profile. <laughs> why do you think I get so many likes? <laughs> this is the one that works nah, the you most. Do, no, you know what works the most? The best way to ask me out is by forks me at gunpoint. That's, That's pretty good. good. Also, you know what helps? 6'3". <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not bad. Yo. That's, that's, uh, Yo. Let's go. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wait, wait. You said, wait, I don't want to bring that up. Does that mean we've liked the same person? We've matched with the one of the same <laughs> Wait, who is Whoa! <laughs> wait, can you just point at it? No, no, but hey, also, I don't want to, well... I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say there's a, a few. There's a re, well. We found the line. We found yeah, the line. Just because we'll talk about it after. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Well, it's not bad. It's just like I'm. 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 Not, I'm slowing down. I'm not like. I'm not really. Uh, for most the time that I've been working and touring and stuff, I didn't have the opportunity to like go on dates, and then the pandemic hit, and I really kind of couldn't. So, um, and I had a girlfriend for a bit who's awesome. We're not together anymore, but um, he's he's I like just, we're still together, but I'm on <laughs> no, hands. No, 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 no. <laughs> and. Uh, and so yeah, I've just been like kind of you know going on some dates, but um, I'm I'm not going on as many anymore. What's your What's your go to uh, message? My go to message is hey. <laughs> Does it nice. work? Simple, sometimes, sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. But I don't like. I just say like, well, I just like be like, send me your your number. I thought you were gonna say something else. And I don't even I don't even have the. I'm just like, let's just go out. You know. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm similar. I mean, you, I think you don't have to go in. When you got a profile like that, bro, you don't gotta say anything. Dude. Guy, I, guy, bro, I hit him. I hit him with. I feel like we're taking things too fast. Okay, that's a good. That's that's really good. But I feel like as a you know as a lyricist as a songwriter, you could just throw some. Do you ever throw your own lyrics in there? No, good, no, I've good, got good, nothing. Good. I've got nothing funny on mine. Um, but I do every once in a while get a, a, a let me down slowly. You know, mm. kind of. Is reference. that immediate? No. No, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a no. That's a that's a no. You get but yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. That is kind of interesting to think about. Wait, are it's you like, on? Are you? Do you have a girlfriend? No. Okay. No, right. I'm also on Hinge. I do not do nearly as well as what's that. A, what's the what's the pro, what's your profile like? You got any of your your videos? Any of your podcast? Oh stuff? God! Throw no. them, throw them your profile. Hell, <laughs> this better not be as cringy as I think it is. Or I'm gonna punch you. It's it might be cringy. I don't know. How about you? I also am on him. All right, let's go. Let's go. Wait, pull yours up, Alyssa, on the no, big I'm screen. Not pulling it up on the big screen. Oh, to get oh, dude, that's a great picture. Thank you. Six one. Okay. Six one. You guys are vertically gifted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you studied music? I did, yeah. I went to CCM. What did you study? Technically, it was electronic media. Let's so. talk about it on our date. <laughs> <laughs> With the same person. With Neil deGrasse Tyson? Oh, my God. Oh, you little I do have Neil hey, look, I got a picture on mine of, like, Platinum Records. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> you know what's much less cool? To have a TikTok on there. Like, this one did well. <laughs> I you have... Just have I'm shameless on mine. I have a picture of me on stage with John Mayer. So, okay, yeah. That's got to get some play. Dude, you're, but, you're talking about him cleaning but, up? But for scale, it makes me look tiny. Because John is like 6'4". Is he really? <laughs> yeah, he's a big guy. Never would have guessed that. You crush it on here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever double date? Um, <laughs> he's stolen a woman from me once, but besides oh, that. Okay, you did? What happened? No. Say one more word and I'll bring up the Snickers story live on air. Um, December 8th, you have music coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, so people, where's the best place to find it? The best place to find it is anywhere you stream anything. And you're Alec Benjamin on everything? I'm Alec Benjamin on, on everything. Well, I think we've had you here enough. Do you mind if we uh, get you the hell out of here? I'm, I'm, I am I'm really enjoyed this. Thank you guys this for having fun. me. Thank, yeah, you, thank you for thank having you for me. Coming. I appreciate it. And also thank you for uh, agreeing to have me um, back. Just- Despite or, despite the fact that when I first reached out to you, I uh, dropped the ball. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Appreciate sir. it. All you do is owe me a Monopoly game, and then we'll, right. be, we'll be square. Fair enough. Uh, thank you guys for staying until the end. Uh, remember, December 8th, Alec Benjamin. Also, subscribe to our Patreon where you can uh, win prizes. We just gave away an Xbox. Uh, what else do we give away? A Nintendo AirPods. Switch, AirPods, uh, good, good prizes. gift cards, Mar- and merch. merch. Uh, so subscribe to the Patreon. It's going to be the first comment. It's also going to be in the description. Also, I love you. Oh, we just did a drunk episode, which was wild, pretty nuts. And they got very inebriated and they yelled at each other. And Jared ended up slamming his door later when he went upstairs. But we don't have to talk about all that. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for uh, watching. Wait, what? You forgot to say what to comment. On oh, the uh, comment your favorite lyric for one of Alex's songs. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. And if you don't remember, I will drown. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Bye. Awesome. Oh, yeah, brother. How was that? It was great. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Did you ease into it after a second? Yeah, it felt pretty, felt really natural to me. Thanks for.